Welcome to the highlights of the PAM Asia webinar. Before we start, we would like to start with a short introduction about PAM with a movie. Meet PUM Netherlands Senior Experts. Yes, Miss Mins, it is a company, private company in Uganda, and we deal in fresh fruits and beverages, but we focus mainly on uh, fruits and more especially pineapples. But uh, we needed more expertise in making jam, mainly in, in production, marketing, and other things. 25 years ago, my parents had a Robusta farm. So uh, the advice we want to get from the training course is uh, how to improve the uh, roasting skill for my staff um, and how to make a better coffee um, for the customer. Second House Product is a family business operating since 1986 because we really were searching for someone who spent his life on the ground, between the machines, between employees, in implementing and growing and introducing new items. With an extensive network of voluntary experts, PUM provides exactly the knowledge that suits the entrepreneur's demand. By working together with companies and partner organizations, we promote the sustainable growth of small and medium-sized enterprises in 35 countries worldwide. Yeah, Caroline, the, the PUM expert, she was very good to us. She was so caring. She handled our staff very well, and people were very fond of her. And she trained our production staff and marketing staff in the best jam making practices. Uh, after her stay here, we have increased production by 40%. She has really helped us to produce more efficiently and to have our product on the market in a good shape than before. Mrs. Paula uh, gave us a, the advice that we use on the Vietnamese coffee to make a best uh, coffee. Because uh, we, we still think that uh, Vietnamese coffee is not good as uh, Laos or another country. After Mrs. Paula teach us how to crossing, how to blending and cupping, so we, we can make a better coffee now. And we turned out to find someone from our culinary field who have supported us a lot. Due to his experience, certainly, he know how to deal with these uh, bottlenecks or tough situation. And now we're moving more cost efficient and more productive within the same time, within the same people. One day, one day. PUM Netherlands Senior Experts delivers impact by sharing knowledge. Thank you for attending this webinar. My name is Martine de Graaf and I'm part of the Business Development Department at PAM. Together with my colleague Sven Dekker, I will facilitate this webinar. The goal of this webinar is to show you some best practices of partnerships between Dutch entrepreneurs and PAM that lead to a win-win situation. PAM is active in nine developing countries in Asia, such as Vietnam, Indonesia and Pakistan. In the last five years, PAM has supported about 3,000 small and medium enterprises in this region to stimulate sustainable economic growth. Thank you very much, Martine. My name is uh, Sven Dekker, and on behalf of PAM, I am the country coordinator uh, for Vietnam. Um, in the countries we work, we work with local representatives. Um, like in Vietnam, I have a team of 10 local representatives. But throughout Asia, we have a team of 63 local representatives. Those local representatives, they are actually uh, into our market. So they have their network with the smaller mid-sized enterprises, but also like um, local uh, um, uh, chamber of commerce, uh, and of course also with the Department of Foreign Affairs. This makes PUM a very suitable business partner for Dutch companies who want to expand or want to start business within Asia. So for today's webinar, we have the following guest speakers. We have Dutch entrepreneurs such as Rijk Zwaan and Seed Processing Holland. We have PAM experts Paula Koelemeij from Simon Leeveld and Johan de Visser from Albert Heijn. We have Mr. Hai Tin from the Vietnamese Embassy here in the Netherlands. And we have Matthijs van den Broek. He's a Southeast Asia expert. Enjoy the webinar. 
pump very often is a linking pin between Dutch companies and the small and mid-sized enterprises in the country we work for. for. Besides doing advisory missions, PUM has a business link program. Within the business link program, PUM or the expert invites the company to come to the Netherlands um, for a week and um, 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 they will visit all kinds of companies that are related to uh, the business of that company. In the next video we have an example of uh, one of those uh, business link uh, programs that was very successful. Uh, it's a company called Tanlok Vatsiet um, uh, who visited uh, seed processing uh, Holland. Now, one year ago, yeah, we didn't have much contact with the company uh, Tanlok Vatsiets in Vietnam. But uh, who could expect that after one year it is a great customer? This story starts in the Mali Toren in The Hague. Two years ago, Pum received a request from an agricultural farm in Vietnam called Tanlok Vatsiets. Tanlok Vatsiets is a vegetable plant breeding firm. They uh, develop uh, varieties, vegetable varieties, for Vietnam region. Their main problem was development of diseases in their varieties. They wanted to know how to prevent this disease development. After a thorough inspection in Vietnam, Pum expert Litwine gave her advice. When they have uh, diseases, in their seed production, they have to prevent spreading of the disease. And I know a very good company, Seed Processing in the Netherlands, which has machines where you can treat the seeds in. And after treatment, uh, they don't spread the disease further. Pam invited a Vietnamese delegation to the Netherlands. During this time, they also visited Seed Processing Holland. I was at the exciting about my visits. When I went to uh, Swiss Professing Holland, uh, I uh, was very exam advantage teleco and uh, modern uh, machine here. Now we supplied a uh, machine, uh, we call it a rotary uh, coater, and it's a machine that uh, applies uh, yeah, plant protection product to the seed. And uh, the objective of that is to, uh, to protect the seed against diseases in the soil or uh, against uh, fungi or insects attacks. And now the big advantage is that when you do that, you don't have to spray a lot of chemicals uh, in the field when you're growing the plants. So it's also environmental, it's a, it's a good way to do it like that. I am very happy. Palm of Wai have made me gross and lowless and increase our company profits. Uh, yeah, both parties actually profit from it. Now, it's not only interesting for business, eh? this is also, yeah, we are, the Dutch horticulture and seed industry is, uh, is, is leading sector eh, in the world. So we have a lot of uh, expertise. And I think uh, with this knowledge, which we can transfer to uh, developing countries, yeah, we can help them uh, for the future and uh, gain expertise and uh, knowledge. Home is a place uh, which brings the whole com community of company together. Besides the network of the uh, companies that most of the experts work or have been working for, PAM also has a wide network with relevant embassies and governmental institutions. In my role as a country coordinator for Vietnam, I have a very friendly collaboration with the Vietnam Embassy. In this case, I would like to introduce to you Mr. Hai Tin of the Trade Office of the Vietnam Embassy. Yes, so, uh, we have uh, concluded the free trade agreement between Vietnam and the European Union with uh, fundamentally uh, import tax reduction and market access and uh, trade facilitation. Uh, last year, we received uh, more than around 20 mission from Vietnam to the here. And uh, Boom is uh, very active in uh, working with us and uh, uh, hosting the networking events of, uh, to connect the Vietnamese uh, business in the mission with the Dutch partners. Especially those who want to import uh, the, the product machinery and uh, equipment from the Netherlands and also want to export uh, through to the Netherlands to the European market. Boom has played a very active role in, uh, in Vietnam in supporting small and medium-sized companies 
is, uh, and also uh, help them to upgrade the capacity, improving jobs and also business life and uh, contributing to the sustainable development of Vietnam. Boom has very wide network and also uh, excellent uh, relationship. So we we quite well connected and um, um, and help each other. So we we quite uh, happy with our win win situation over a few years, uh, last years. Our next guest is the Southeast Asia expert Matthijs van der Broek. He is also director of Further East Consult, and he will give a presentation about the economical developments in Asia. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you, Martine, for your introduction. Welcome everybody on this special occasion. Ibu Ibu, Baba Baba, Slama Sore. Asia, one of the most dynamic regions in the world. We've been hearing that for uh, many years. And I would like to take you along in what's going on in the most recent uh, years, as far as the dynamics and the momentum is concerned and why entrepreneurs from everywhere basically, but definitely from the Netherlands, should have a look again, if they never had one before. And uh, because this is the time to be there. And I, I back my story up with uh, some slides. And uh, to take you along this journey over the past 20 years in a, in a, in a bird's eye view. So maybe I can have the, the first slide. Um, as you can see, uh, Asia is where it's happening. I mean, primarily global economic growth over the last decade has solely come from Asia. And uh, the history of it behind is as we had earlier developments in the 90s of last century, maybe I can show you on the next slide. We had uh, the so-called Asian Tigers. Um, they came, they saw, and they left, basically. They had an e e enormous uh, growth uh, uh, path, and then the Asian financial crisis struck, and they re-emerged in the beginning of this century. Uh, what is different now than, than what happened in those days? It's different now because now they have a, a, a financial solid rescue package like we have in Europe with the European Central Bank. All the 10 member states of the ASEAN, Association of Southeast Asian Nations, have donated money to have this uh, uh, financial reserve, it's called the Chiang Mai Initiative, to, to weather any crisis that will happen in the near future. Um, so the Tigers from then, uh, you know them in Southeast Asia primarily, are joined by China and India. In the late 90s, they did not play any role of significance, but as you know, since the beginning of this century, they certainly did. So China and India are relatively new kids on the block. Well, let's have a look what's going on. Maybe I can show you something on the next slide. ASEAN, you may be familiar with this uh, EU-like trade block in Southeast Asia. Uh, it took a long time to uh, to get accelerated with developments, but it did. Since 2007, things got really serious. 2015, we had the uh, ASEAN economic uh, community, and uh, step by step, uh, uh, it's getting a serious it's getting a serious business, and uh, um, it may well become as big as the EU in the next uh, 10 years or so to come. But even so, even if it does not reach the uh, level of the EU, it's, it's, a, it's a very strong regional sub uh, block. Uh, good to know, because you may set up shop in one of those cities and enter all neighboring countries as well. Um, I have some figures on, on, on the next slide I can show you. Um, EU companies are quite confident of what's going on in ASEAN. This was a recent survey just a couple of months ago. Um, and uh, uh, over 2019, and you see the, the vast majority uh, sees ASEAN, uh, Southeast Asia, as the region with uh, tremendous economic opportunities. Um, you also see that the far majority of the respondents expect to increase the current level of trade investment, so expand what they are already doing there. And of course, they, they also would like to see the EU restart in negotiations again for the EU ASEAN Free Trade Agreement, which was abandoned or stopped in 2009. And uh, um, I think now is the time right to uh, bring it back on the table and start negotiating again. Um, can I see the next slide, please? 
Um, uh, of course, you know ASEAN, you know the uh, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, which was a China-led initiative, which will further boost uh, trade and investment in the entire region. Uh, it may take too long to go into all the individual countries, but let's, uh, let's highlight some of them, uh, where PUM is very active too. To start with Indonesia, for example. Can I have the next slide on Indonesia? Indonesia, uh, I mentioned them, uh, is one of the Asian tigers of the last century that re-emerged this century and is doing far better than it did in the early days of, of, uh, of their emergence, emergence. Now we have a true middle class to speak of, which was first, basically, initially it was a huge upper class, which was confused with being a middle class. Now we're seeing a true middle class. That means free disposable income and true purchasing power. We have double income families, we have suburban living, and it's time to look beyond the big cities in, in Indonesia, like Jakarta, Medan, Bandung, Surabaya, and look at the second tier and maybe even third tier cities. But that's where it's happening. That's where the airfields are being built. That's where the hotels are rising. That's where the business people go. And that triggers all kind of businesses and investments from Indonesians regionally and from uh, 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 Europeans or Americans. So it's time to uh, uh, take Indonesia serious. As, as uh, Ford Motors once said a long time ago, you cannot have an Asian strategy without an Indonesian strategy. It's far too big and far too promising to not do anything there. Maybe we can have a look at um, Myanmar, for example, you, you remember the initial euphoria, undoubtedly, in 2014, after the political changes, everybody got very enthusiastic and entered the market immediately. That may have been a little bit too early. There was no room yet for A brands, for Western multinationals uh, to enter the market at that time. Uh, and there was no middle class to speak of. Um, now, we're, uh, we're almost like six years further down the road. And um, Myanmar has grown primarily thanks to major investments from neighboring nations like Thailand, Singapore, China, Japan. So it's time, I think, for Dutch entrepreneurs, Dutch business to re-engage economically with Myanmar once more because the time may be right this time. Vietnam, of course, Vietnam is, has been in the, in, in, the, in the spotlight recently a lot because as the most successful Corona winner of the world, having uh, less than uh, 65 death and only close to 1,500 cases, can you imagine? And uh, they've been doing things right, primarily from the government, have timely reacted, adequately reacted. Um, so the first to recover from this crisis, if they haven't recovered yet already, is Vietnam. So any country which thinks about post-COVID-19, then it's Vietnam. Of course, they got hurt by the crisis too. More than a million people lost their jobs. They closed the borders and they need business from abroad as well. You cannot save your economy only by domestic activity. Um, a very young population, like Indonesia, a very young demographics. Um, EU Vietnam Free Trade Agreement, effective last August 2020, will boost further trade. And it's one of the reasons that this EU ASEAN free trade agreement may come on the table again. China plus one, that means that companies may relocate from China to Vietnam, their manufacturing basis, their supply chain partly, or have it both. Part of it in China, which is very well skilled and very high developed, and part of it in a country like Vietnam. Vietnam with its 95 million people, young demographics, hardly hurt by the corona crisis is a country where you should have a closer look at if you haven't done that already. Um, what's going on in the rest of the region? Of course, Vietnam, we talked about a little bit Indonesia, Myanmar, but there are other economies. We may not be that easy to enter. Uh, uh, Bangladesh, for example, Pakistan, for example. Bangladesh was the, one of the most successful economies in 2019. And it was not only export driven, there are major investments from, from, from the government, uh, public investments, infrastructure, public-private partnerships, uh, so beyond exports only. To give an example, Dutch dairy multinational Friesland Campina uh, uh, merged or acquired Anglo-Pakistan in 2016, and even in 2020, 
a register of growth of 9%. Pakistan has a very similar story. A big consumer base, a gradually developing middle class. So even these two nations, along with Vietnam, along with Indonesia, along with Myanmar, are very promising markets. And Dutch businesses should have a look at, at opportunities in these markets. Is it easy? No. Is the walk in the park? No. But Indonesia is, is not a, part, a walk in the park either. You need local expertise. You need to have proper, thorough research done, not only on a macro level, but on a grassroots level. You need sector specific expertise. And uh, otherwise, you may fail. So it's not easy to enter these markets. You need to prepare yourself properly. And an organization like PUM is, is, is may well become the partner to, to undertake this uh, adventure with, because they have the local partners, they have the sector-specific expertise, and they know what's really going on in these markets. And you need that because it's, it's very complicated. But if you do so, if you team up with the right players, you can be very successful. And um, it's the land of the region of opportunities. So I would say, uh, give it a go. Thank you very much. As Matthijs showed in his presentation, Indonesia offers a broad range of business opportunities. PAM has been present in Indonesia for over 40 years and has been able to support about 500 small and medium enterprises uh, in the last five years. Two years ago, one of our PAM experts, Johan de Visser, who is also branch manager at Albert Heijn, went to Indonesia to a farmers cooperative called Al Itifak. So Johan did not only support Al Itifak with his practical knowledge, he also introduced Al Itifak to the Dutch seed company Rijkswaan. Yes, uh, I uh, went to uh, Indonesia, uh, a country of 275 million people, and I met uh, Al Itifak in uh, Alamanda in the highlands of uh, Bandung, uh, 50 kilometers from uh, Bandung, and uh, I saw a unique uh, community of uh, 270 farmers. Uh, and uh, based in an uh, Islamic boarding school and with a fully integrated value chain uh, supplying to the supermarkets. And uh, I was asked to help them to improve the quality, to develop uh, new products, to look at the good manufacturing practices and yeah, to hire the, the harvest and the results. And I was very glad to, to see uh, that the people were eager to learn very uh, eager to, to implement the advices and it was uh, possible for, uh, for PUM to help them also financially uh, with a grant to uh, recover the, the greenhouse uh, in, in that place, in the central place. Uh, so yes, and I, I went back in 2019 to see the results uh, and they were uh, very, uh, they, they improved very, very quickly. There are a lot of opportunities in the veg fresh uh, vegetable markets to bring more uh, safe foods, more uh, uh, added value products. Uh, it's a big opportunity in Indonesia. They are uh, in urgent need of more fresh and, and safety uh, food. Uh, and I know the CEO from uh, Super Indo, that's a, a supermarket chain in Java, of about 180 uh, stores. And it's a part of uh, my company in the Netherlands, so uh, I connected uh, them with each other and I said to the CEO, yes, you have to look at that very nice uh, cooperative because they are totally integrated, the whole value chain, with, uh, from farmer to, uh, to the products to the, to the retail. And in uh, Indonesia it's more common that it, you bring the uh, vegetables to the open market and then they sell it and, and buy, buying and selling in the open markets. And nobody knows where the, the, the vegetables are coming from. And now you have a, a totally uh, uh, integrated uh, chain uh, with, with more uh, healthy uh, food. A year after, in 2019, they came uh, to the Netherlands for a business link. Uh, and it was very uh, nice to show them around. Uh, I bring them to the Rijkswaan, uh, Bejo also the supermarkets, of course, but also to uh, farmers in the Netherlands, to uh, tomato world, and all kinds of uh, new uh, experiences uh, for, uh, for them, uh, to, to show how we are dealing 
with the vegetables in the Netherlands and how sophisticated we, we are doing that uh, good manufacturing practices. Because they came to the Netherlands uh, for that business link, I was able to bring them to Rijkswaan, uh, a high quality seed supplier uh, from the Netherlands and uh, they are experts in uh, tomatoes, a lot of varieties uh, of uh, tomatoes uh, with higher results, with high uh, results of harvest and also in the sweet pep uh, peppers. Uh, and because uh, we know if you have the, the right seeds, the right quality seeds, uh, it brings a lot of uh, higher results for your, um, for your vegetables in, in, uh, in Indonesia. In Indonesia it's very important to bring more fresh foods, more safety foods uh, in, the, in the area of vegetables. So it's important for the whole value chain, for the farmers to have more uh, better harvests, for of course the cooperative to bring more uh, money on the table, and also for the retailers to bring uh, safe food uh, to the customers. And uh, Alitifak is a kind of example business model for other uh, Indonesia uh, cooperatives uh, based in the Islamic boarding schools to say, okay, can you translate the uh, business model of Alitifak to your own uh, community? And uh, last uh, year I helped them with remote coaching uh, from the Netherlands uh, via the, the Zoom and the Teams to find also uh, new cooperatives to copy the business model. I started with a small business mission and now I see the results that it's multiplying to 10 uh, other uh, cooperatives and uh, it is the goal in the next years to bring it to 45 uh, cooperatives in Java and South Sumatra uh, and also to, with the help of PUM program uh, management. We also have a pre-recorded interview with Mr. Setia Iravan. Mr. Setia Iravan is the CEO of Al Itifak Cooperative. Uh, right now we have um Co we have cooperated, cooperated with the Rijuan uh, in 2019. Also, Mr. George Van Knapp has already come to Alitifa and then, yeah, give a lot of uh, things, a lot of information about how uh, the technology is is very important. What we are, what we are want to make a good quality product in Indonesia, as we know. When the farmers uh, try to cultivate everything, but yeah, sometimes we are uh, still uh, hard to find, uh, difficult also. Uh, it's it's difficult to find the market, but also but yeah, because we have a good communication with the Rijuan as a seed company, and also with the uh, Arbit, uh, sorry, not Arbit Hens, uh, Superindo, yeah. So yeah, it is more simple to us, and then perhaps maybe two or three months later, it will be yeah we have a good quality product that has already a market for uh, the consumer. We also have a pre-recorded interview with Mr. Jos van der Knaap. He is product development specialist at Rijkswaan. Yeah, Rijkswaan really likes to help uh, yeah, small growers getting to used to a more advanced way of growing. Uh, but in Indonesia, we still have a very limited capacity. So we cannot really uh, help a lot of individual growers. But uh, through Alitifak, we immediately have a, a group of growers that uh, can work together, that can learn together. And that is really a, a big advantage. Um, of course, also it's a good advantage that the Alitifak is a, like an example, uh, uh, as an example function for other boarding schools in the country. So hopefully through uh, Alitifak we can uh, spread the news uh, much broader. I think yeah, we can help them to really to create a continuous supply. I think we have a lot of experience with that, and also with a uh, 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 yeah, high quality standard. So, um, yeah, and, and, and for us, yeah, I think, yeah, of course we do sell some seeds and, and that is interesting on the short term, but I think the main interest is that we, um, yeah, through al we can create a pool of people that understand horticulture. 
And I think in Indonesia, there's really a big shortage of people that have uh, practical experience, practical knowledge. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, all these uh, people in the boarding schools and in the, the cooperatives uh, yeah, can be the growers of the future. And so it's really more in the long term, uh, but we, we, we think it's important. Last but not least, on this webinar, we have an interview with Mrs. Paula Kulemey. Mrs. Paula Kulemey has been working for a long time at Simon Leveld as a coffee expert. She will tell us some stories about her mission to Vietnam and we will have an interview about the challenges and the opportunities the Vietnam coffee business is for the Dutch market. If, if we look to the, the coffee chain, what's the, their biggest challenge? Is it growing, blending, roasting, cupping? Ah, yeah, or is yeah, it all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, well, I, I think the, the biggest challenge is uh, growing. Uh, because uh, uh, when the coffee, the, the Robusta coffees were introduced in Vietnam, um, it was mainly focusing on the mainstream, the commercial coffees, the commercial markets. Uh, and for that reason, uh, a lot of uh, chemicals were being used to to um, to increase the production. And uh, if you go to the coffee uh, estates in Vietnam uh, and you look at the the soil, you see it's like you know so much chemicals are being used that the soil is practically dead. There's no insects in it. There's no development. There's um, no biodiversity. Um, and for that reason, I think uh, Vietnam needs a lot of support and knowledge uh, how to grow uh, sustainable coffee. If you look at uh, coffee traders in Europe, in the, for instance in the Netherlands, and you are looking for organic Vietnamese coffee, uh, you will be disappointed. So I think with the support of uh, agronomists, uh, we can develop sustainable coffee and, uh, in particular, uh, organic specialty coffee in Vietnam. The second step in the chain is uh, <coughs> knowledge of uh, the specialty market and knowledge how to roast, blend, pack and brew coffee. And that is what we did uh, in Ho, Ho Fung, the, the coffee company that we supported. We trained the people, we trained the coffee team of Ho Fung in identifying uh, specialty coffees, in developing a blend uh, and developing the roasting profile. Where I see the main potential is uh, coffee growing, so the production, sustainable coffee production, and where I see a lot of potential is bringing uh, roasted coffee from Europe, from the Netherlands, because we have this roasting expertise, bringing roasted coffee to Vietnam, in particular starting a chain uh, similar like what Starbucks and uh, Costa Coffee did in, in China. Actually, you can look at Vietnam uh, I hope I do not offend them as a little <laughs> China. You know, they're booming, they're developing. Uh, the young generation is picking up uh, habits and, 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 and trends that we can uh, uh, introduce in their society. Okay. So I think if coffee roasters focus on, uh, on a country like uh, Vietnam, there's a, there's a lot of business there's a to lot do. Of potential. Yeah, there's a lot of potential. Okay. In this webinar, we have presented various examples of partnerships between Dutch enterprises and PAM that lead to a win-win situation. If you want to know more about this, you can become a member of the PAM Business Circle. This is an exclusive network that will give you more information about upcoming markets and collaboration with PAM. Um, yes, so we have come to the end of this webinar and I give the word to you. I, first of all, I would like to thank all our guest speakers um, for participating on this webinar. And of course, you all attendees. I very much hope to meet you soon at our PUM Business Circle. Mm -hmm.